We'll play Trust Part 2 and we'll go from there. And I think I'll end it for today then after this. Another day passes in a flash and it's already time for the next club meeting. Although Monica should have come up with a plan for today's club tasks, she hasn't been able to shake her guilt and anxiety after reading Sayori's poem. I'm so stupid. How did I let myself be the centre of attention? Sayori's going through these kinds of feelings and I'm letting her comfort me instead of the other way around? What kind of club president does that? This whole time, I didn't think to ask about her own feelings. Oh my god, this is sounding way too similar to what I was saying back when Sayori hung herself. Please, no, don't do this, man. Please don't. So much for the stupid vision. Sayori enters the club room with her usual smile. But upon seeing the downcast Monica, her smile quickly fades into an expression of concern. Monica? Is everything okay? I'm really sorry. I'm such a terrible friend. Uh, huh? W what are you talking about? You're an amazing friend. Monica shakes her head. I made this all about myself. Even you said so yesterday. You told me that I'm trying to make the club that I need the most, right? But my problems are so trivial compared to yours. Sayori responds quietly. What are you talking about? But as she says that, her face darkens. Through the silence, Sayori mutters her realisation. I left my folder here. Monica stares blankly ahead, unable to come up with a response. I wasn't ready to share those. Now you're worrying about me. I don't want that. But why? We're friends, right? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Friends look out for each other. I want to be here for you as much as you're here for me. Another long moment passes in silence. The air is incredibly heavy. Where is Yuri's fucking aroma candles? This is different. It wasn't just about you yesterday. It was about the club. Besides, things were so happy yesterday. You don't need to do all of this all of a sudden. I don't want it. I like happy, so if you do this, then you're just being selfish. Monica massages her forehead, struggling through the frustration of such a paradox. It's understandable that Sayori isn't ready to share certain things, but as unfair as it is for Monica to pry, it's also painful for Monica to force herself to ignore the needs of her friend. I'm sorry I looked. I disrespected your privacy. No, I don't blame you for looking. You would have at least needed to check if it was mine. Yeah. Monica takes a deep breath. Okay, I understand that you don't want me to worry, and I think I'll be able to put this aside so that we can move on. But can you promise me something? Promise you what? Monica pauses to collect her thoughts. This is the Literature Club. It's a place where people can express themselves in the ways that life normally doesn't allow them to. That's the vision. In fact, it's our vision. Write the way into your hearts, or whatever. So, I just want you to promise me that you'll remember that too. It doesn't have to be right now, but I want to be here for you when you need it. I want us to be ourselves like that. Sayori smiles gently. I'll promise you if you promise. Unable to help it, Monica returns Sayori's smile. I promise. Me too. As the conversation closes, the mood in the room is lifted. With that behind them, it's time to proceed with the club activities. So, wanna teach me about poetry? Huh? What about the recruitment? It's fine. We have plenty of time for that. But right now, I feel like I want to do this. I mean, I do have to fulfill my end of the promise, you know? <laughs> There's no way I could say no to that. Just don't expect much. I do a lot of writing, but it's not like I'm a scholar or anything. That's fine. I think I just need, like, some motivation. I never know where to start when it comes to writing poems. Starting isn't so hard. You just need to write down your feelings and see where it takes you. Yeah, but that wouldn't come out any good. It's not supposed to. You're gonna have to fight your perfectionist mind on this one. <laughs> you can just start by writing your feelings and see what kinds of things it makes you think of. And then you can turn your feelings into a little story. Hmm. You can get your feelings down first and then make it sound pretty later. It's like, it's not like building a railroad where you go from one end to the other. It's more like a collage where you find all the things you want to put in and then you arrange them in a pretty way. At least that's how I do it. It's not like it's the only way. I'm sorry, but my throat is starting to hurt doing Sayori's voice. That's why Monica's voice sounds so much more like mine. Just calmer. Oh, but if Natsuki was here, my voice would be dead, man. But it's a really good way to not get stuck right at the beginning. I understand. Yeah, I always get so caught up in how it sounds that I forgot about what's actually important. Monica pulls out a pen and paper to start writing on. 
Stop being a perfectionist, you idiot. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Marcus scribbles out you idiot after she writes it down. No, keep it! What? Why? Are you calling me an idiot? Of course not. But the point is that you're not supposed to police your feelings, right? Be as dramatic as you want. <laughs> but I was just... Well, yeah. Underneath the scribble, Monica rewrites, you idiot. She stares at the paper. Her words stare back at her. It's kind of funny how I wrote down that I'm mad at myself for. And then I did the exact same thing anyway. This is really going to take some getting used to. I believe in you. And thanks. I do too. Me, I mean. But also you, of course. <laughs> Monica continues to exercise jotting down her thoughts. It's surprisingly quite a struggle to write down without overthinking it. But after a while with Sayori's guidance and encouragement, Monica's sheet of paper begins to look fairly lively, peppered with all of her random thoughts. Phew. Monica looks up and down at her sheet. Gosh, I feel so tense looking at this. I hate it, but it's also kind of liberating. Hmm? I can tell how hard you're trying. It makes me happy. I think you'll be good at writing poems. <laughs> Don't give me too much credit. I'd have to try really, really hard at it, but I think it's something that I'll enjoy doing with you. Sayori beams. I'll stop here, but we still have time. Let's try to work on a new flyer for the club. I won't be so picky about the language. Yay! Let's do it! Monica and Sayori proceed to their work. With each passing day, the two of them become more confident in the club. Not simply from their recruitment plan, but from their vision as well. As their bond strengthens, so does the essence of the literature club. Finally, they begin to truly feel it's only a matter of time before they find more members. Another day passes. As usual, Monica is the first one to the club room. With her is a printout of the revisited Literature Club flyer, complete with all the new ideas Monica and Sayori came up with. If only this was the flyer we gave to that one reading girl the other day. It's so much more attractive than the old one, but the new catchphrase is featured clearly in the centre of the flyer. Right the way into your heart. Surely common sense would say that one writes from the heart, not into the heart. But the message being delivered is that one can use writing to discover themselves. Hopefully, Monica and Sayori had thought that it would be enough to garner some curiosity from students. Why do I feel so tense looking at this? Monica thinks back to the previous meeting when she performed the writing exercise. Was I always this bad at expressing myself? How am I supposed to be the president if I can't even demonstrate what the club is supposed to be about? The literature club is truly beginning to take form. But with that, the weight of Monica's shoulders becomes heavier. The bait club was always about rigid structure, formulating art airtight points and counterpoints and delivering them with conviction. It was about the person on the outside. That's why Monica was so good at it. It existed entirely within her realm of comfort. It's suffocating. I need to break through this mental wall. I need to learn to express myself. For real. Monica pulls out a sheet of paper and grabs her pen. She presses the tip of the pen firmly against the paper, 